Alright, what's going on guys? So today we here we have the first and what is very likely to be multiple different variants of the Zaku Phantom Master Grade Kit here. This is the Slash Zaku Phantom Izak Jewel custom version. So as you can tell from the box art here on the front, this is a premium Bandai kit. Uh, really cool box art there, it's just an all monochrome color just because it's P Bandai and so we'll have to see, hopefully on the manual we'll have the full color version of that, it'll look pretty cool but the mobile suit as you guys may be well aware of is in like a light blue and white color so it should be pretty awesome. It's got the giant Gatling guns on the back, it's got now the two of the big spiked shields instead of the one and of course it's got this big giant uh, melee beam weapon there which is pretty awesome looking so I really like this variant of the kit and really glad to have another variant of this kit out. And definitely looking forward to more because I personally really like the design of the Zaku Phantom and its different variants so I look forward to building them. That said, the Master Grade, if you guys saw my review of just the original Master Grade, uh, I had, I liked it a lot. I didn't feel like it was really the best Master Grade just compared to other Master Grades in that it was just very simple compared to other Master Grades and some people I think maybe like Master Grades because they like a little bit more of a complicated build, building the full inner frame and everything like that, but this this, this kit is pretty simple and goes together pretty quickly. So just taking a quick look around the outside of the box here as you can see with it being a P-Bandai kit, not a whole lot to look at there, so let's crack it open. And as always guys, a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support. If you guys want to check out the different P Bandai kits and other kits we have available on the site. Check out the link down in the video description below. Use my coupon code there, Zakurilius10, to save yourself 10%. So, very reminiscent to the Goof Custom with the color scheme here, the two different colored blue. But then we do also have some orange, some really nice water slides here as well. That's always nice to see. And we have some white and yellow accents as well. Looks like we got some black and then some big gray parts there for the backpack. So, obviously, with this having a little bit more stuff going on, then the original kit, uh, we're going to have, I think, probably a few more runners than we had with the original kit. So here we have the manual, and yep, as you can see, we got the full color version of the box art. It's cropped though, so you can't really see the exploding gin there over there on the side, but still does look pretty cool. On the back, we have the decal guide where all the decals are going to go on that and on the weapons and everything up there as well. And then for the painting guide down there, we have that in Japanese and in English as well. So with this being a P-Bandai kit, uh, we have color on the outside of the manual, but we don't have like the usual center page with more photos and information and stuff like that. It's just straight into the parts list and then straight into the constructions here. So there's nothing really too much more to look at here in the manual. But as you can see, we are going to have a few leftover parts from the runners there. Not a whole lot, just a couple. And yeah, it's just construction of the kit and then the weapons of course and all of that and then the hydra gatling beam cannon there so yeah very big bulky backpack i'm not really expecting this to be able to stand very well on its own we'll see but uh it does look pretty awesome so all right let's get a look at the runners all right so first off we are going to have one single foil sticker here a little pink dot there for the model eye and then here's those beautiful water slide decals, mostly in white, but then a few there also in red and a couple in black. It's got a really nice mix of just kind of logos and also just kind of generic caution marking stuff, so these should look pretty nice. All right, then runner A here is in four colors. We got some orange for the accent colors there across the bottom, our two main blue colors there, darker blue and lighter blue for the armor, and then one little clear part up there for the visor and the head. And like with the Gunner Zaku Warrior, this kit is going to have an all black inner frame, so we got some inner frame parts and weapons parts here on the B runner. On the C runner as well, just continuing on with some frame parts, we also got some hand option parts on there as well, still in black. And the same thing once again for runner D here as well, just more inner frame parts here in black. And we are going to have two of this D runner. Runner E1, more inner frame and weapons parts here in black. And then runner E2 will be a copy of most of the runner there. Runner F1 here in a light blue color for some armor parts, the shield and etc. And we got two of that runner as well. And runner G1, some white parts for little accents, some grenade parts, the main part of the shield. And then G2 is just a copy of the part there for the shield. Runner H1 is some parts in dark blue, mostly skirt parts around the waist there. And we got a H2 runner here for a copy of that section up there. Runner I1 is our clear pink beam and saber effect parts for the beam axe, I should say. And we've got two of those with this kit, so we've got two of this I1 runner. And then runner J here is marked RBE1. I'm guessing that stands for realistic beam effect. Anyway, this is the runner that was originally with the real grade Shinanju, now been repurposed for this kit as well. 
We'll see how that ends up working out in the review portion. Then runner K is that advanced MS joint runner here for just the piping on the legs in black. And runner L1 here is finally getting to something brand new for this kit. It is parts obviously for the massive Gatling guns on the backpack here in a dark gray color. And we've got also runner L2 for a copy of this half of the runner here. And then runner M1 is another four color runner, one little yellow bit, a couple of red bits on there, some light blue and some white parts there for the beam axe. And then also runner M2 for a copy of this section of the runner here. And as you can see, you will have two of the helmets, so you can have a spare of that, that's cool. So there you have it, not necessarily a whole lot of new stuff in terms of new runners, really only just a couple of brand new runners, but they are going to make a pretty big splash with this kit, I think, definitely going to make a pretty big dramatic difference from the original kit, obviously being it a completely different color as well, uh, but we'll take a look at a comparison between the two of them in the review portion of the video, of course, let me get it built up and then we'll have a look. So here it is guys, and not only does it look really awesome as expected, as I was not expecting, it's actually able to stand on its own, that's actually quite surprising, I was not expecting this to be able to stand on its own, of course, like the long barrels come up over the front of the body a little bit, so that kind of gives it a little bit of balance, but I was just, just expecting the back end of those gigantic machine guns to just weigh this thing back super a lot and it just doesn't really seem to be that much of a problem. I mean, depending on what kind of pose you wanted to go for, that certainly could be a problem, I suppose, but just for just a regular standing pose like this, you're gonna be doing all right. And then, then even once you get like a weapon in the hand or something like that too, that also kind of helped to balance it out because there'll be a, a little bit more weight to the front. But anyway, looks great, and I'm really glad this is actually able to stand up on its own. That's also good news. So let's get into talking about some of the different details and accessories of this kit then, shall we? So I just want to first mention a few of the leftover parts as you do really only have a few of them but they are actually quite interesting. So you have two leftover helmets, one without the antenna and one with the antenna. So that gives you the option for this kit if you wanted to make this without the commander antenna you could use this one. Or if you have the original kit, the Lunamari Hot Gunner Zaku, you could give that an antenna head because that one just only has just the regular one like this. So you got some useful parts there. You also have a leftover just regular spike shoulder like this. So again if you wanted to give this to this kit one way or the other or on the Lunamari Hawk version maybe you wanted to have that with two spike shoulders maybe not have a shield shoulder on that kit or something anyway you could get some optional parts here with that and then we have doubles of the handle parts for the beam axe now for the longer version and the shorter version not really too useful maybe perhaps except that you do also have this part left over the beam effect part from your beam effect runners this one's not useful for this kit it's not used for this kit one thing you could do i suppose uh, if you wanted to get a little bit creative just cut off the ends of this shorter one and then like cut off the little connection tab on the end of this just glue that straight onto there and then you could have yourself you know you're just a very simple little beam saber there with the effect part and everything could be a really cool little thing very easy to make but as for the official accessories of course we have our action base connector piece here and for the swappable fingers there we've got closed fists on the kit now we do also have just open fingers and regular holding fingers these will be used for the beam axes and trigger fingers as well for the left and the right so again you can dual wield very easily with the hand options for this kit we've got the beam machine gun here once again it's the same thing as what was included with the original lunamari hawk version it's got a little tab here for plugging this onto the back skirt if you want to do that you need to pop this part up for the magazine and fold that down onto the side so that's out of the way and also the secondary handle here of course also moves up and down as well the main handle doesn't move or anything it's just kind of stuck there but it's an all right design of course you are going to have a, some seam line action on this as well unfortunately but it does it is nicely detailed anyway and also not new to this kit of course is just the regular beam tomahawk here and while this is not new to this kit what is new to this kit is the fact that you have two of them the luna mario hawk version only had one and now you have two so of course you get two sets of the beam effect parts for this as well. Now it has two beam effect parts for this, one that goes in the top here, there we go, a little bit tight to get that in, and then one that goes here on the front as well. There you go, so that's how that's going to look. Now these unfortunately there's no place to store these on the kit. I think you guys said that they're supposed to store up inside the shield in the in the series, I forget, but that's what I've heard from you guys anyway. And I guess it is sort of disappointing that they don't do that actually here in kit form, but I don't know. You could, you know, make some way to connect these onto the back skirt or something like that if you want to get creative modifying those. But of course the other big main accessory here is the gigantic beam axe. Now this has the extended handle and also has the shortened handle basically. All you need to do to shorten that is just take that off and just plug this onto here. The end part on there as well, so that's how it's going to look when it's all folded up. And it has a little tab here, once again, for just plugging that onto the back skirt for storage if you want. But then when this is in the extended form, this little 
blade there at the back will move. It can actually move all the way out to there. And then up here at the top, these sort of like accordion out, just kind of interesting, out to there like that. So it looks pretty good and still doesn't weigh a whole lot. So it shouldn't give us really any weight issues. And then of course we have the beam effect parts for this as well. So this one on this side looks fine at first glance. When you take a look up closely, you'll notice, oh, what's this little curved lip there? That's for where this beam effect part is supposed to fit onto the Shinanju's beam axe from the real grade, and you can see it doesn't actually have that detail here for this. So it's a small thing, not really all that noticeable, but you can see that detail there where that's supposed to fit into a different shape, not like this white part. And the other side, like I was talking about before, it's kind of even worse. Not only is it ill-fitting there a little bit at the top, but also at the bottom, it's just like leaving this gap here and it just doesn't look quite right. Once again, I think when you're seeing it from a distance, you're probably not gonna really notice all that much, but I just feel like instead of being like that, it should just be a little bit more at an angle like that so that the beam effect looks like it's pointing straight down along with that white part down there like that but the way that it's set in there it just doesn't look like it's quite fitting in there correctly so that's definitely a little bit disappointing about that again it's a small thing but just like bandai just make a new effect part for this come on that's it for all the accessories anyway and then of course just on the kit we have the new parts there just for the backpack the shields there's nothing new about them again except it's just that you have two of them in this case the shoulders and the shields are exactly the same it's just to swap the left and the right are identical there so for these big giant things these will move up and down of course you can also rotate them a little bit side to side and that's gonna be pretty much about it like I said well, although they're gigantic they don't really seem to be giving you too much weight issues it looks like so you can get those all the way down to the front like that to pointing like straight ahead or you can have them pointing all the way straight up like that vertically and you could even go a little bit farther than that even if you wanted to but so while they're simple i mean they look good and they're still pretty nicely detailed as far as like a big giant weapon like this is gonna look i mean if you wanted it to be more detailed i guess it could have been but i'm pretty satisfied with the amount of detail on this i think it looks fitting to the design anyway not super overly detailed but it's got some nice detail on there and like the barrels those all look nice doesn't really have much in the way of seam lines either though which is good the way that the construction for this goes together kind of hides the seam lines pretty well so you don't really have to worry about that too much so i'd say it's really nice as for the articulation of this it's going to be exactly the same as the original version so i don't need to get into that if you're interested in seeing more about the articulation you can check out my re video review of the luna mario hawk Gunner Zaku Warrior. Just like with that kit here, you can just fold down the cockpit hatch there and you can see the pilot figure seated inside. Unfortunately, no standing pilot figure with this kit. That is kind of also a little bit disappointing. Then of course we have to take a look at a quick comparison between the two here and obviously not going to be a whole lot different but I think they make for a really awesome set. And if someone were to ask me which version would I recommend, personally between the two of them I probably would recommend the Slash here. I do kind of like it a little bit more. I like the fact that it's got two of the big spike shields. Of course the machine guns are a pretty cool gimmick to this and I'm not really the kind of person who typically is a big fan of giant Gatling guns with my mecha mobile suits. It does look really cool on the Zaku here. But then again I I don't know, the gigantic cannon on the Gunner Zaku Warrior is pretty awesome as well, so it's kind of a toss-up for me. I'm just got my fingers crossed that they are going to make the third variant as well. I think it's what Ray Zabrell's version anyway. It's the one with the big missile backpack as well, uh, the missile packs on there. So I'm sure they're probably going to make that at some point, but I'm looking forward to whenever Bandai does get around to releasing that version as well. But so while I do have like a, just a couple minor complaints, like the beam effect parts not really fitting all that well, the lack of a pilot figure to go along with it, this is small things and also just what I talked about a little bit earlier about the kit in general just being a little bit more on the simpler side for an MG is sort of like a little bit kind of somewhere between an RE100 and an MG almost kind of in ways so uh, I mean take that all as you will one thing that I do think is definitely a good positive for this kit that totally makes up for all those things in my mind is the fact that it comes with the nice big sheet of water side decals. I love the water side decals for that. Obviously you're not seeing them on the kit now. I'll save those for once the kit is eventually actually all totally painted, but the inclusion of those, just because it's something that Bandai rarely does and basically only gives those mostly in just P Bandai kits. Thankfully because we have those, it totally makes up for anything that's just very slightly negative about this kit. Overall, it's a really, really great kit. Like with the Gunner Zaku Warrior. I think this one's actually probably better in ways just because the Gunner Zaku Warrior had the gigantic seam lines all the way down the big massive gun. Whereas this one doesn't really have that, so it doesn't really have much in the way of seam lines for this kit actually, so it's going to be a much easier kit to paint in that sense. You don't really need to worry about so much of that. Whether you have the Gunner Zaku Warrior already or not, I would say this definitely makes a great addition. If this is the one you prefer, obviously I would say it 
just spend a little bit more money to pick up this version even if you already have the Gunners Aquarius though they definitely make a really cool set to have them both together I don't think it's the case where sometimes if you already have one version you maybe don't want to get the other version this is one where I would definitely think that getting both versions there's not that much different but there's enough diff different between the two of them that I think they make for a cool set without looking like you just got two of the same kit you know what I mean so uh, that's gonna be it for the review guys thank you so much for watching if you do have any other further questions or comments about this of course do feel free to let me know down below again guys uh, check out the USA Gundam store the different P Bandai and everything we have on there on the site you can get 10% off using my coupon code there's Zachary's 10 so hope you're all having a great day I'll see you next time bye bye